Hello. Hello. How are you? Welcome to Lido. Thank you. Uh, so first time here. Uh huh. It's a new what, town. Yeah, it's a new town for you. So what are your um, your impressions? Well, I've only walked for a little, uh, like ten minutes. Mm -hmm. I actually uh, couldn't find my way out. <laughs> out of uh, the train the station. The train station, yeah. Yeah. So I just started following people, getting in the crowd. Yeah. And it was bizarre to hear. Uh, and excuse me, could you like put the microphone right to your lip? Anyway, I, I think I can hear you better now. Oh, great. All right. So yeah, uh, first time in Blida, and um, you said that you liked it so much that you would, uh, you think that it deserves its own book of poetry. Yeah, not uh, poetry, but uh, mm. more like short stories because there were lots of sceneries repeating themselves. You see, and it was yeah. inspiring. Yeah, yeah. What inspires you? Uh, the external world, actually. Mm. For my first book and the one that is going out next uh, next month. Yeah, since we're talking about your books, tell tell us who you are. Uh, introduce yourself, like as an author, as a, as a poet. Mm. So. And what are you doing here? So, uh, <laughs> the name of my ego and earthly identity is yeah. Benariwa Anis. Mm -hmm. I am a major in English literature and civilization. I've worked as an editor and have published two books so far. The first doubt was present in Sila 2019. And the second one was uh, released digitally in February 2020, before the apocalyptic era yeah <laughs> yeah so uh, you're here to promote your book which is uh, sins of algiers mm -hmm. yeah which is a follow-up to sons of algiers the second of a trilogy yeah uh, are these two books available uh, only online or um... well uh, all the copies of the first book were sold out because it has been two years okay uh you can find them in libraries mm -hmm. all around algiers yeah uh for the following one it will be uh, out on on start of march probably okay okay so we'll find them in libraries in uh, on the start of march yes yeah okay so you were talking about uh, what inspires you what inspires you to do to make this kind of content so uh, what's really p particular about uh, sins of algiers mm -hmm. it it's that uh, it is a combination of the realism of the first book, Sons of Algiers, and the spiritual side of my second book. Uh, it's, so it's more like a romantic realism yeah. for those who know the literary term. Yeah. Uh, so I've read uh, a little bit of your uh, book, uh, Sins of Algiers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, the first uh, impression that I had was that uh, it's kind of, it's quite um, it's quite melancholic mm -hmm. yeah so where does that come from so uh, actually the melancholy comes from uh, as the back cover says it the mm -hmm. struggle against the massive conformity and ignorance of the Algerian society yeah so it's more like a node to those who feel uh, alienated to, mm. to just for having different thoughts yeah from feminism to socialism to uh, spirituality mm -hmm. to to secularism even so even in islamism because yeah. uh, the islamists encounter a certain conformity as we do from yeah. them so uh, you told me that there was a melancholy yes mm -hmm. uh, but actually i've even had the cover changed just to show that this book is about the spirituality behind the errors from which the sins not just the errors themselves okay so what do you mean by sins why sins why errors so uh, actually the title uh, I, I had to find the first title was going to be tears of algiers mm -hmm. but then i just didn't want to talk about a romantic uh, heartbreak poetry i wanted to make it uh, algerian yeah as the first book Mm -hmm. So the sins are like uh, those things that uh, we all perform, but uh, in the eyes of the society, they're sins. For example, a romantic encounter yeah. from which the second chapter, pure love, yeah. can be seen as a blasphemous act from the eyes of the society. Yeah, yeah, yeah true. Uh, so yeah, uh, you, you uh, say, I, I'm not sure exactly where I read that. But you say uh, we are uh, 
we are the sins of Algiers. And you're talking like about uh, a generation, you're talking about um, like uh, a group of people who are the sins of Algiers. We are the sins of Algiers. Yeah. So is it everyone? <laughs> no, <laughs> everyone it's who lives there. Those who are sick from living a hypocrite life, you see. It's Ooh. mostly our generation, Generation X. Because yeah. uh, we've seen our grandfathers and fathers uh, talking about this new set of ethic, misunderstood doctrine, mm. as if they lived as saints in the past. Yeah. So we take the blame for their sins, you see, yeah, when yeah. they talk about their new generation. Mm. It's more like a self-mechanism, a self-defense mechanism, mm -hmm. where they project their own sins on us. Yeah. And we, as Numidians, as I said it, we as Numidians, we adapt on yeah. a route to carve another sin. You see, we accept that title and bring with it something uh, optimistic. Yeah, yeah, true. Sometimes you even accept it with pride. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like uh, look at us, we're different and uh, we're new. It is a pride, yes. And, uh, and uh, we kind of, our generation kind of looks at the older generation and looks at the state of our country and thinks, hey, this isn't, it wasn't working very well. Like it wasn't very, uh, whatever you were doing, whatever lifestyle you were pre you are preaching right now. It wasn't right fruitful. Now, yeah, it wasn't very fruitful. So here we are right now and you're, at least we're trying, uh, we're trying, we're trying to do thing. something. Yeah. Yes. One of the things that... Um, that um that we um kind of um that manifests itself from uh, the fact that we are uh, we don't conform to the older generation like uh my parents my uncles uh, people that i'm supposed to look up to uh, all speak french mm -hmm. and here we are doing a podcast in english and uh so your books are in english and your poems are in english so as an Algerian, this isn't like uh, the default, uh, the, the par default uh, language. language. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So why did you choose English? Uh, it's Th was uh, it was it like something you didn't even think about? No, I actually started writing in French during okay. my young years in middle mm -hmm. school, because uh, it was the language spoken from in the place where I grew up, Elbiar. It's a very chic neighborhood, and yeah. at the earliest time of my younghood, I started. Uh, let's see, uh, noticing the social classes, Ooh, yeah. you see, because I've grown up in primary school, I studied in Scala, which was uh, the poor district of LBR. And then in the middle school and high school, I switched to the eastern side of the town, which was uh, the chic neighborhood, so to say. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, what was your the question? question? Was, <laughs> the question was, why in English? English yeah. yeah. So, uh, well, the, the first author that uh, that inspired me was Shakespeare. Okay. I've met his geniushood that couldn't be understood in French, you see, mm. because in each diction that he uses, it complies to several meanings. Each of these meanings reshaped the whole story. So it was a, he was a genius to be noticed, and it was at ease to understand him in English. Okay. It was mostly because of my field of studies. Right, so... Uh one of the reasons was the fact that uh, Shakespeare was your hero, kind of. More like a discovery during a young age. Okay, okay. And uh, the fact that you study English. Mm -hmm. All right, great. Uh, and uh, you're not the only author of your generation. Actually, we're going to have uh, another guest uh, on this podcast who is also going to talk about his book, uh, who also wrote uh, short stories uh, about Algiers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I think... Uh, Either you already know him, or uh, I think you're gonna. I might have gonna, uh, yeah. inspired him. Uh, some, some yeah, now. or actually, he was uh, there when we met in CCF. That's when I. That's, Bumadi. I think that's what he's called. Uh, he's the guy behind uh, the page uh, with Shraik. Mehdi. Mehdi, Mehdi yes, Mehdi something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and uh, he also writes about Algiers. I didn't know that. Yeah, uh, I actually uh, looked at his uh, books and uh, he has like short stories of Algiers and then uh, photos like the ones that you have. So I see a lot of similarities between you two and uh, although he, he writes in French, but like what you could have wrote, you could have written about anything. You could have uh, written about many things that could have inspired you. But why Algiers and so many books about Algiers? What is this passion for Al for Algiers that you and your generation has? 
I'm actually quite lost. I have no idea of the person that you're speaking about. Was it Wasim Blarbi? I think Mahdi. No, no, Mahdi. I was talking about Mahdi. I have a problem with names. Me too. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> my point was that uh, you write about Algiers mm. and you write a lot. All okay, of your the books. The Algerian pride. Yes. Yeah. Mm. All all of your books are about Algiers, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And you're not the only one. So why Algiers? What is? Where does this passion for Algiers come from? Uh, well, uh, I don't know the purpose of that author that you mentioned mm -hmm. because I'm pretty sure I was the first to write about Algiers. The second, actually, there was a book uh, called Sofia in the White City. Okay. And I've checked the histories of the books, uh, the Algerian books written in English. Uh, most of them were like a, uh, was, had Western influences. You see, they mm -hmm. try to write something more similar to Twilight, something more similar to Fifty Shades of Grey, something commercial. But never, no one had thought about uh, writing his, on his own culture. For my own part, it was mostly because of the Herak period okay. that I've met many intellectual people in Algiers okay. and they were all united under the, more like the Algerianist movement, you see? Yes. When, when we, we were all directed to, towards one objective Yes. The, in the earliest days of the Herak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, although maybe we, we don't really agree, we don't have the same uh, political agendas, etc., but we we uh in that movement we agreed that we are all algerians in the and, first uh, days yeah yeah uh, i'm sure you remember it well of course i do yeah of course i, mm. I used to during that period i used to teach there i used to teach in um li like right next uh it was to when we, we met uh it was during the days that mm. we met yes that, w that i was teaching there yeah yes uh so it was uh, it was uh, Herak that inspired you to write about Algiers. Yes, because uh, that first book was more like uh, an endeavor for me mm -hmm. to be politically active without really being poli into politics. So more like to transmit my message. That mm -hmm. was the first days of the Herak, the Algerianism, through a book. Uh, so because this, I'm sorry, the second chapter is mm -hmm. called Vox Populi. Yes. It's all different witnessing on the Herak, from a policeman to a woman, a juvenile, and yeah. a student. Yeah, so uh, the second chapter of what book? Sons of Algiers. Sons of Algiers, yeah. Yeah, so you pick, uh, you pick um, witnesses and they talk about their experiences? No, they're uh, fictional characters. Ooh, okay, okay. So who are, I suppose, inspired by uh, real characters? Yes, exactly, yeah. because you see that uh, in the chapter of student, he's inspired by all the students. In the chapter of ju juvenile, he's inspired by the rascals and so on. Yeah, yeah, I see. Yes. So, um, about uh, uh, I feel like uh, there's uh, a message in Sins of Algiers. We can see here under the the title. Rascality, love, yes. divinity. What do they mean? They're the chapters of the book. Yeah, so what is rascality? What do you rascality, mean by Rascality, uh, the chapter, the first chapter is called uh, The Door of Algiers. Mm -hmm. It's uh, like a journey to discover the depths of Algiers mm -hmm. and the rascal side. Because in the streets of Algiers, you would encounter different people, Al-Qahwiyin that we call. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're actually not that dangerous and I've befriended no them. Yes, uh -huh. All these categories were inspiring and were talked about in the book, mm -hmm. in the first chapter. Yeah, uh, actually in the first chapter, I, f I thought you were um, actually talking from your own perspective. From my own perspective as the novelist, because I've included the list of dramatis personas, which are the personas that you meet in the book. Ooh, Back okay, to the okay. symbolism of the first book. Yeah, so are there, uh, are there like... Um, other books or other works from other um, from other uh, authors that have inspired what you are what you are doing well yeah uh, for the poetry of the sins of algiers i mm -hmm. was heavenly uh, inspired by french singers like? jacques brel uh, uh -huh. hubert felix Stéphane, leo ferré damien says noir désir and so on okay so that poetry was inspired from these authors who were poet at that time too mm -hmm. But the English is more of a uh, 
Victorian inspiration from the works of Edgar Allan Poe. Mm -hmm. I am currently preparing my dissertation on one of his works. Okay. And in his uh, essays, he wrote uh, the philosophy of composition, in which he teaches how to write poems, not spontaneously, but in a pragmatic sense. How See? so? Like you actually have um, I used his recipe. school of thoughts to shape these poems. Tell me about his school of thoughts and how did they shape your poems? The philosophy of composition. It was an essay written by him in 1841. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he thought that poems should be written for a purpose and the author should always be aware of that purpose even before writing the, the words. And then the first part is the spontaneous writing, mm -hmm. as if you are drawing a painting, you start making the shapes and so on. Yeah. But in literature, you write simple dictions with no rhymes yet. You just write your feelings, what you feel. Yeah. And then comes the works of the left side of the brain, the masculine side, where you shape these elements pragmatically and you work on the rhymes, you work on the stress, you work on the meter, and mm -hmm. it produces something uh, quite aesthetic to the literary mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is where uh, yeah, your uh, works come from. What about books that inspired you? Are there books that have inspired you? What, what kind of books do you re even read? I read lots and lots of poetry books. Mm -hmm. So first of all, when you came here, you saw the book of Oscar Wilde on mm -hmm. the table. Yeah. I'm familiar with uh, one yeah. of his works. Which, yeah. uh, which are? Which the is? picture of Dorian Gray. Yeah, what do you think of that book? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I have a friend of myself. mine who prepared the thesis on him. Mm -hmm. That was the information that I was going to gasp as soon as I saw this book. But I was like, no, just hush, don't talk about, uh, don't dive into literature yet. You can, you can feel free to dive into anything. Okay, what's particular about uh, Oscar Wilde? He was actually inspired by uh, Edgar Allan Poe in some sort. I just read few of his poems okay. and he gave lots of efforts on the aesthetic of the language mm -hmm. just like Edgar Allan Poe did. Yeah. For example, Wilt, uh, Walter Whiteman who was a pantheistic uh, American poet. He wrote spontaneously, you see, he didn't yes. care much about the aesthetics. Yes. It was his uh, feather in some sort, but Ed Oscar Wilde and Edgar Allan Poe by aesthetics, I mean the, the, the rhymes, the, the meters, some things that no, you notice at first yes, reading yes. and not like a spontaneous thoughts that follows. Yes. So what's uh, kind of uh, usual about, uh, about uh, poets, po poetry is that whenever you read poetry, you know right away that you are reading poetry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is it, uh, is it, uh, is this like the aesthetic uh, uh, side that you're, you're talking about? Uh, I'll give you an example. Okay. Edgar Allan Poe. Uh, but joy was not gathered twice in a life as the roses of Pisum twice in a year. Notice the stress. Pisum twice in a year. Yes, yes. That's the aesthetic. That's something that you hear. Okay. See. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I always uh, thought about, uh, thought about um, poetry as just being something that means more than, it, than what it literally means. Mm. Yeah. Is this, uh, is this like definition enough for you, for your own poetry? Or well, is, it, is it that? differs. It differs from a poetic movement to another. Mm -hmm. For example, you have the surrealistic movement, which is uh, the movement of those, those French authors that I am inspired from. Surrealistic. Uh -huh. It's beneath the surface. Comme les fleurs de la luzère fleurissaient les seins de Lola. Elle avait un cœur d'hirondelle sur le canapé du bancal. Mm -hmm. Je venais m'asseoir près d'elle. Dans les plafonds du diamant là, you see, it's like uh, a group of thoughts just put. Each line is a thought that derives from your subconscious. You yeah. See? So yeah. Uh, each movement has its own particularities. Mm -hmm. the Victorian movements with the uh, Oscar Wilde and Edgar Allan Poe, Charles Dickens, mm -hmm. even the the Nuba, the Algerian Nuba. I haven't. I've never heard of them. Uh, that's actually. Uh, C'est la poésie de l'Andalou, tu vois, avec okay. leur know-how, avec... Ah, yes, yes. En fait, c'est un mm -hmm. type littéraire, ils se disent Nouba, Jazeera. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Ah, yes. Ah, yes. So, how, how would you compare that with uh, 
your own poetry, all the poetry that we were uh, talking about right now. My own poetry. Yeah. Is I that, actually uh, even that? included some uh, Nuba influences. Mm -hmm. For example, you have the first page, instead of reading the preface or the prelude or the introduction, you have mm -hmm. an istikhbar, written in an istikhbar poetic uh, structure. What is istikhbar? That it is that uh, thing that you sing in the, 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 the first start of the opera, of the, the, of the song. You see, mm -hmm. it's like you're telling khabar, you're telling of what is going to happen. And stuff. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you put people into context. Thoughts into context yes. from for the istikhbar that I've written. Yes. Yeah. So if I understand well, like uh, okay, this is where we are. This is what's happening. This is. Voila. You start to read the preface. Then you have the istikhbar. You see. Yeah. The work on the on the lulu, on the shabi. Hmm. Then you read the preface. Then you have the istikhbar. Then you talk about how the path to the lulu is going to. Okay. Okay. Ah. Can you imagine if the the song that you sing is going to be sung? Yes. Mm. Would that happen? Bon, I met a lot of friends, the musicians. I met a lot of friends with two friends who told me that this is the case. You have to let us sing. I don't know what you're thinking. I said, okay, how are you? I met another other vocalist, Hypnotica. It's a friend of mine. He said, this year, I will certainly sing one of your poems. In Algerian metal. I would like to see that in your Algerian metal, yeah. Mm. Yes, there's actually a scene of Algerian metal. I, I thought you were in a band. Not really, no. I've actually wi worked with some artists, uh, with some uh, band members to write the lyrics, but mm -hmm. I, I was never part of a band, no. Oh, okay, okay. So, uh, while Kima got like the video the podcast, I told you really there's uh, there's a sense of melancholy and even of sadness for Kitab mm -hmm. Um What are your hopes for Algiers? Because if you had no hopes, you wouldn't have uh, written any, any of this, right? Mm -hmm. I know a lot of young people who kind of lost hope. Uh, thus losing inspiration. Thus yeah. losing inspiration. Why would I write about a city in which I never want to wanna live, uh, in which uh, I don't think... Uh, anything is going to be better at this place why am i going to write anything about it so like your books are a form of hope like personification of hope uh, this is how i see them this is how i interpret them mm. so what are your hopes called do you think we're going to live in a better algiers in the future so first of all algiers is my town mm -hmm. and uh, algerian is my identity okay see So when I write about myself, I write as an Algerian, you see. Yeah. And we have many, many things to be proud of. We should give more care to the cultural and artistic side of the town because it, uh, it gives us a way to express, to talk about the taboos and stuff mm -hmm. from an artistic manner. Yeah, yeah, th yeah. This is art. You can't criticize that. <laughs> yeah, I see. Um, okay, goodbye, Malek. Yeah. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> we have a friend who talks a lot on Instagram. We used to talk a lot. Yeah, so uh, I used to be obsessed with bands and, uh, and metal and all yeah. that. I'm still obsessed with it. I used to look for a chance to do something. But my voice just doesn't really. <laughs> suitable for that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Malek. Goodbye, guys. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much. Uh, I have um, a... Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it was nice to meet you. Me too. Bye. It was a pleasure. Yeah. This is... She's gonna be uh, the next uh, guest. And uh, yeah, uh, our hopes as this generation... How do you imagine Algiers in the future? And so too, imagine we have uh, our parents, our grandparents. Mm. about what they did and what they left for us the bloomers <laughs> yes the bloomers uh and uh on the hasbom شويه ya وشل on the reproach قالوا علاش الجزائر هي هكذا كي حنا لحقنا لا فانت تاعنا بدينا نعيشوا exactly صبنا الحاله مانكا شوف هذه ما حبوش يفهموها and uh, do you think that 
our uh, children are gonna find a better place are you hopeful for that it's up to us we the new generation to make that happen yeah so how do you imagine a better a better algeria <laughs> for example i know can i like a better algeria it would be an algeria that is more free and uh by more liberal extent, uh-huh more liberal yeah. yes especially freedom of speech and by extension it would be more uh science oriented it would be more progress oriented the be actual carrément je ferai rien pour le camera من على 50 سنه i can't wait and uh, even less but it's like it's such a far fetched stream yes but at the same time you know i've had on uh, this podcast people who actually worked on a rocket li khedmo fuse right so fuse but still Huh. Right, yes. Um, I thought there is this kind of energy. There is this kind of tamawila, will, willa, something to. Are you? I hope, yeah. Yeah. So tell me about your own hopes. I have an optimistic hope. Yes. You do. But, uh, the mm. future is mysterious. So as I said, it's up to us, the new generation, to make that happen. The, to make the Algiers or the Algeria that we imagine come into shape, because the old. the generation the bloomers well in few years in few years they won't be here yes <laughs> yes. yes of course we're not going to be here 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 so <laughs> uh-huh so your hopes are more political <sighs> They're optimistic, yeah, because uh, we've created our own artistic scenes through the social network. Flezani, the Milsa Tuga, the group de rap, Kia, Kima, Diaz, MBS. Can you any of them not censor? Not that they're smart. Yeah. The Amy Juzon, the radio, the television, or the cassette of Hamis is the one. And for example, the group de metal, the team, premier group de metal Algerian, the two batters, or the batter and bassist, the pair. يا مات لي تيروريست تما دوكا عندنا اون سان ارتيستيك هاك شايف سور لي ريزو سوسيو انترنت راهي تحضر فينا اكزاكتومون اه يا ذيس بودكاست اكشولي از ا فاين اكزامبل خاطر ذيس از سوبوز تو بي ا راديو شو رايت يا بصح يو وودنت هاف بين ايبل تو دو تو هاف اور اون راديو وذ كونفنشنال مينز شغل تحط ماشينه هاكا لي تبعت سينيال That's completely illegal. But on YouTube, it's fine. Yeah, it's not illegal yet, anyway. But uh, yeah. Uh, so you think, believe, uh, believe the internet is uh, is uh, what is called here? The thing is new. We are going to change a little bit the direction we are going. Changed already, actually. Changed a lot in the face. Yeah. Because at the time, we were just watching the television news. باش تسمع اخبار راك شايف ما ويمدولك واش راهم حابينك تسمع مي دوكا الاخبار تاعهم يفوتوا في لي ريزو سوسيو ماشي غير البوليتيكال نيوز راك شايف يا دي زارتيست الجيريان اللي هم داخلين في واحد ديجا لو غور كيما ليلستراتريس دو مون ليفغ امينا امينا بن بوراش سي اون ليلستراتريس تري تالونتيوز تلاقيت بها لا بروميير فان 2016 Mm-hmm. Ah, هي اللي درت لي زيلوستراسيون. Oui. سي تري تري بو. يا. لانستيتيو كولتوريل ايطاليان. Mm-hmm. Uh, une exposition d'art et j'ai adoré. شايف؟ Elle dessine dans le gore, le mysticisme et tout. C'était délicieux de travailler avec elle. Oui, elle a fait l'exposition تاعها في Alger. Sur Alger en 2017. Okay, and انت uh, وجاك تروح تقول باللي شغل تشهرت ولا قدرت uh, Non, mais je relève encore le les mouvements, les mouvements artistiques, les amis bano, amis okay, bano à okay. travers les réseaux sociaux. Ouais. Tu vois, Zman, il y avait un seul mouvement. Mm. Donc tu as un peu de partout. Tu as des. Mm. Yeah, it's and it's happening, it's happening everywhere in the world. Je veux dire partout, mm. partout où une chouf, chouf blique, je veux dire le chab, ma ou les chisques. Voilà. On est connecté, gamme à Badana. On est connecté. Surtout, surtout la génération hadi, mm. génération terne, mm. parce qu'on veut pas faire la guerre. 
On veut, ah, on veut pas ah, faire la guerre. Surtout, donc, à, donc à Fjordnag, ça ne sert à pas grand-chose de faire la guerre parce qu'on a les, les armes nucléaires. Hein, donc. Non, mais je roule dans le terme, mais c'est la guerre, la guerre. Je mm-hmm. je roule, we, we, we're becoming more open-minded than, our, ah, okay, okay. than the oldest generations. Je Why is that? Then because of internet? Because of internet, yeah. Because we got to meet them. To, mm. see, to to break the cliches mm. I have lots of readers from Israel too whom their grandparents lived here in Algiers yeah. see and they like my book they've read it well uh, it was uh, the first contact with me f- with the Jew from my own part you see with an Israeli hmm? with an Israeli exactly yeah 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 بعد حتى نجاو ليا قراو كاين اللي قراو كتابي تلقاوه اونلاين ما بالش كون خرج ليا دي لافد ات اكشلي تشغل باسكو لو اونسيان جينيراسيون عاشوا هنا معانا كشي يحكيو لهم على الجي اكزاكتو يحكيو لهم غير بالخير شايف يا يا جوستومون العفسه تاع لي بوبل بكري كان شغل هكا مانيش عارف بلاد وبلاد ما يتفاهموش ونقرا بيناتهم ميكسيتشا yeah. وعلاش باسكو الشعب تاعهم البانارابيزم والسوسياليزم ايه ما يهدوش لغه واحده وما يتلاقاوش mm. دونك كيفاش نتايا تقدر يو فيل امباثي تووردز بيبول اللي جامي تلاقيت بهم اللي ما تقدرش ميم با تهضر معاهم ما تقدرش كومينيكي معاهم شغل تجيك نورمال تذبحو تجيك نورمال تقتلو تجيك نورمال بصح دوكا وي موست اوف اس موست اوف اس سبيك انجلش يا صافي شغل اللي دا إدا شغل هكا هضرت with an Israeli and uh, you talk to him and then realize بلي he's a teenager كيما نتايا and he's just uh, playing whatever video game you're playing و uh, مانيش عارف he's just on social media minding his own business ما yeah. تقدرش فغيمون تحكم بكحلة وتروح لبلادو وتيري عليه هني تارغومونتي معاه هني والو هاك شايف اوفا جو سي با ارغومونتي سي بيان دارغومونتي بارفوا سي بيان واه نعم دو يو افويد دا Hmm? Do you avoid that? No, I don't argument. Well, yes. Like... Uh, I don't think... want direct in debate. Yeah. I don't want to say hello to you. Yes, yes. Uh, I would like you to do something. I don't know if uh, if you're interested in that or not. Uh, I just want to be honest with you. Do you do you plan on doing audiobooks? Yeah. Yeah. You've heard the, the extract that I've put on Instagram. Ooh, I haven't. Oh, I haven't. I mean, yeah. I haven't. Do your homework. <laughs> I should have. Yeah. So, do you mind? That reading. would be like an honor for my podcast. Do you mind reading some of your poetry? Of course, or with pleasure. Whatever, whatever. Like, uh, well, then uh, mm-hmm. you get to pick the poem. Ooh, for so your generosity. Yeah. Sins of Algiers. Uh, I would like you to read. Um, We should read the Istikhbar, though. Yes, I'm gonna, I was gonna say that. <laughs> yeah. Here you go. We like half the. Shwia, shwia. Yeah. Here you can deploy the microphone. Shwia, perfect shape. Deploy the shwia. Then you have on your side. Wait, wait. I'm gonna help you. No, no, no. Say, oh, okay. So, what comes up? Right. Hada. Salut. Okay. Bon Neha. Ah. I'm gonna follow on PDF. Bon, par contre, tu es le bizarre, c'est ma rah, ne pas se chouiller, ne sortir avec Aïs. Ok. Voilà, normal, ça dérange pas. Non, on n'a pas dit. Ready when you are. No matter where, of comfort, no man can speak. Let's talk of love, sex, and epitaphs. Write sins on the buttocks of Algiers, and if flower its green-blooded flag on its virgin skies. I might not write again to read the sound of the villes that wasn't vacant of any villainies. I'm sorry, do you remember when I talked about duality, you find a line that is positive and a line that is negative? Yeah. Watch this. It okay. goes all this way. Okay. These villainies are now shouted out loud in a picturesque imagery if the reader is a connoisseur of melodies. And once again, you're in my, fi- you're in my phonetic strings. You're in my mind. 
after the sons of Algiers and its own tales of treacheries. Moons after in its merit, I loaded the sons and the town and went further down with the daughters of spirituality. I journeyed to psychedelia and wrote everything down. But the citizenry never dared to disturb their inner calamity. From psychedelia with love was a bizarre sound, and the ones who picked it were nothing but amateurs of ecstasies. That's actually my uh, second book, From Psychedelia with Love. Mm. It was a commercial failure. <laughs> <laughs> this is how it starts. Yeah, the but first uh, Harry Potter. it got me in touch with a very particular spiritual community. Ooh, okay. Mm, okay. Because the book is heavily spiritual. Yeah. So, and I have measured out my life with coffee spoons, with long moments of awe and wonder reviving the child in me. And I counted the suns and pondered with the moons in a moonlit conversation with the troubadour by my company. Then I missed my town and my friends. I wanted to ride them soon. La Voix de Ville was turbulent, yet it had an inspiring citizenry. The rues were empty, we were in a lockdown. I soon found out that Algiers was resting from its inside agonies. My souvenirs filled the lines and I locked them with runes. And the silence that dwelled in its rues brought such a serenity. Back to the first line, back to my town, back to the ville that was indeed vacant of any villainies. So weeping, smiling, I greet thee, my town and bound to your ruse as a wave is bound to the sea, when the searching eye of inspiration is for you bent down, in Saint Raphael's balcony that lights on these inspiring sceneries. For God's sake, let us sit upon the ground and tell happy stories on deaths and love and tragedies. With soul men reverence, throw away respect. My heart is open and your ear must be prepared. Yeah. yeah so uh thank you by the way for anytime for, yes and uh tell me about your first book quickly it was the, the first book was Psych sons of algiers what about the one that has psychedelia in uh, uh, <laughs> come to <well. laughs> yes it should have been like a commercial commercial success because it's such a provoking uh, yeah type of psychedelia I love the, the mic to your mouth yeah of course yeah so uh, uh so mainly 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 because i had bad luck okay okay i see voilà. yeah yeah <laughs> yes it's a comment of mathematics <laughs> بديت هكا درت اون سيكونتان قلت نسي نمشيه من بعد غير حطيت لي سيكونتان هذوك وزعتهم في دي ليبريري اوب كونفينمون يا اي سي سو واي Remind me the title again, Psych From Psychedelia with Love. Okay, from Psychedelia. Uh, so why Psychedelia? Do you, are you talking about your own psychedelic experiences? Yes. Yeah, so what what did you write about? Uh, Bzef, uh, actually Psychedelia is being uh, kind of uh, researched by science mm -hmm. uh, recently. Yeah, you did your homework. <laughs> yes, uh, because Psychedelia was kind of a taboo for decades because of the drug on wars and because of other things and more than a taboo it was a whole cultural and artistic and literary and scientific movement yes. during the 60s yes you have the psychedelic music mm -hmm. you have the psychedelic paintings you have the psychedelic literature by aldous huxley and terence mckenna okay and it was even used as a as a field of science by albert hoffman who was the creator of lsd Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, bizarre things are called. Even that uh, there was, uh, there were civilizations that we kind of lost in time. They used the psychedelics. Yes, well. that used the psychedelics to unlock parts of the brain to, like, kind of uh, get to. I don't know, like uh, their subconscious or something yes. like that. Their psyche, from which uh, the psychedelia. It's the science of the psyche. Yeah, so tell me a little bit about your experience with uh, psychedelia. I personally have no experience with psychedelia whatsoever. So I'm very curious about uh, what it feels like. And well, uh, it was actually, uh, I dived into the psychedelic literature with the mentioning of my one of the earliest stories of my first book, High Lonesome. 
At that time, I didn't know much about the psychedelics, and I've simply decided to write a story on a random persona okay. who uh, who dies of an overdose in the ruins of Algiers. Okay. It's one of the stories, high lonesome. Okay. After that, uh, from psychedelia, I would love was more of a naturalistic book than psychedelic, because it includes four chapters. Only one of these chapters talks about LSD experience. The okay. other two chapters are mainly about uh, the boredom of the wheels. Yeah. A little bit uh, nihilistic, you know, finding the purpose. It was close to an autobiographical fiction because the persona was the same that came from Sons of Algiers, High Lonesome. Yeah. It was reused in another story. Mm. So for the third chapter that is called In Psychedelia, it talks about my own LSD experience. Mm -hmm. uh, the titles goes uh, such as Nature, The Peak, Clairvoyance, Love. It was the revelations that I discovered during this trip. Okay. So do you th do you would you say that you aren't the same person before and after uh, your psychedelic experiences? Definitely and not. Yeah. How so? Well, uh, the first thing that LSD does to you is that uh, it it introduces you to your dear ego mm -hmm. as a different persona from you. You'll start noticing that the identity that you were following whether it's citizen or uh, your MBTI traits, mm -hmm. you're familiar with that test. Yes. Uh -huh. So all these are conceptual and we're essentially one being mm -hmm. with no difference from each other. You see, so it breaks your ego, breaks your egos mm -hmm. and gets you in, in a state of oneness where you are one with, with not what? only the universe mm -hmm. as a grace of creation, but the different people that you thought were different from you. They're yeah. different from their culture, from their language, from their skin, but all these things are conceptual and not divine. Yeah. I see what you're like you and me, the where I, where I start and where I finish and where you start and where you finish. These are just concept conceptualization. This is how you see it. Yeah, sort of. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. Would you I say? I see us as creations of mm -hmm. the divine, as creations. Mm -hmm. He didn't create us differently. You see, he there is. That's why I kept saying divine, divine, mm -hmm. divine is actually the creation of God mm -hmm. that you find in nature. You see, because yeah. nature is flawless. But then you have, for example, this office is a mundane creation. It's mm. a creation of humans. Mm -hmm. doesn't mean it's something bad or something uh, evil, you see. Yeah. After all, a computer is something nice. Yeah. Because uh, when you see during the hippie movement, yeah. those who dived into spirituality yeah. from the psychedelic perspective, mm -hmm. they went into the extremist side mm -hmm. and denied all these new things. But uh, in my second book, I was simply trying to give a balance to the life of the town and spirituality yeah that was successful at the end of the book i see yeah yeah so would you say there are benefit be benefits to having psychedelic experiences yes so these are the benefits the fact that you are able to see things it changes your perception on the external world mm -hmm. you I start seeing things as they are yeah as I said in my book, all I perceived was perception itself, mm -hmm. see, because the ego, it tries to control these sceneries that you yeah. see. From this experience, I started uh, gathering inspiration outside. Mm -hmm. When I walked in, I told you that I was, uh, I saw this and that it was a nice journey because I was connected with the outside world, mm. trying to gather inspiration, uh, trying to read the psyche of a person. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is how you see. You have kind of a, you have kind of a, a photographer's mind. Uh, like um, I, I, some of uh, my favorite photographers talk about how their experiences, the experiences of walking through a city, the same way you do mm. about walking through Blida, for example. They say like, "Hey, I see someone walking by, and I try to understand." like whatever he thinks and whatever he's 
at etc and uh, these people capture what they see through their cameras and mm. you do through your uh, literature and through your poetry for my own part uh, i capture the words i focus on the words mm-hmm. there is a new j- the dialect here كاين اكسون جديد يا جامي سمعتو جامي سمعتو اي دخلت بديت نسمع وانتيك بديت نقراه لقيت بلي عنده دي توندونس ما لاكسون تاع الغرب شويه لا لا بالك بالك ميم مع الشرق تما كنت كونيكتي مع لي مو باغ اكزومبل كتابي تقرا لتحت مكتوب دو فودي فيليان فوكس بوبولي فودي فيليان سي كوا سي ان جور تياترال سي ان جور اوسي ليتيرار شايف سا فيان دو لا فيل كيما نعطيك ان اكزومبل في الفيلم تاع تيتانيك شكون ما شافش تيتانيك ما كاش اللي ما شافوش عندك جاك وروز كانوا يشطحوا الفوقه yeah. دونز ان ديني بورجوا اي تو mm. ومن بعد لتحتها هبطوا ان هول ديفرنت بارتي يس دي تو ذا فوديفيليان غادرينغ اي سي باسكو يافي اونلي ذا ميدل كلاس يا اي فوديفيليان سا فيان دو فوا دو فيل باسكو سي ان كونسيبت لي بان فرنسا سما كون شوي كونيكتي دوغ شوي كونيكتي افيك لا فوا دو لا فيل Oh, okay. So the way you say it, شغل لا فيل عندها اون فوا. سي لي فوا. لي فوا. شايف. يا يا يا. يا فيري فيري كول. وات اباوت دو يو هاف بروجيكتس فور ذا فيوتشر؟ يس. سو فيرست اوف اول ايم جوينغ تو ورك اون ذا لاست بارت اوف ذيس تريولوجي ذات اي ستارتد. ات ويل بي مور كلوزر تو ستوريسيز من ديوتي اند لايت. يا. راذر ذان راسكاليتي. Even though it has an optimistic side, the other one will be fully optimistic and not like optimistic through melancholy. Yeah. I'm currently uh, working on a tragedy too. Ooh. It's Algerian. It's going to be Algerian, you mm-hmm. see, because in my books, Algiers is a mother entity. Mm-hmm. Mother Algiers blew her trampant. Mm-hmm. Uh, in that tragedy, it will be called Le Voix de Ville. Okay. Back to the concept of the, the Voix de Ville. See, yeah. to be different personas, Constantine and Anaba and Tizi and Tipaza mm-hmm. in a tragedy. Yeah. Uh, since uh, we're talking about your projects, would would you like do the same thing that you did for Algiers, but for other cities? That's for other that's the cities? plan for Voix de Ville. Yeah. The, yeah. This tragedy because Constantine is a persona. It's going to be a persona, a person mm-hmm. that speaks. Yeah. See. Uh, Tipaza, I've thought, I've thought about it. I've thought about it through the, the places that I visited. Okay. I'm definitely including Blida. Yeah. <laughs> as the rascal boy. Yeah, see? yeah. Yeah, you need to go around Blida, and you need to go around uh, the older town, because yeah. that's where uh, it's more interesting. Yeah. Anyway, Anis, it's been an hour. Thank you so oh. much for coming. For coming. Yeah. It uh, it doesn't uh, look like it. Doesn't look it doesn't like feel it at like all. it. Yeah, so thank you so much for coming and uh, I hope I have you back uh, soon for uh, for another book or uh, another project. Hopefully, yeah. Yeah, thank you, Anis, for coming. Thank you for inviting me. It was You're a pleasure. Welcome. You're welcome. Goodbye.